Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an ASUS Studio Book 15 the exact model is an H500GV-CHC039R and in this video I'm gonna go over how you can open it up, clean it up and replace your motherboard by yourself at home and why not to take it to a repair shop that you don't actually know the work that they do and how good a quality work they can do because this laptop was taken to a shop with a, a client of mine to get to a shop with somewhere else and after once they got it back it keeps shutting down randomly and sometimes it doesn't even power on so we're going to open it up and clean it up and see what's going on and what's the issue and they're like oh, they gave him a few screws and they lost their screw because they had leftover screws so let's see what's going on so first thing first power up the laptop flip it upside down Leave the front end of the laptop towards yourself. I'm gonna go over the tools that I'll be using. Uh, one first one is a workshop towel, a workshop kit towel. I'll leave all this link in the video description. So grab one of this workshop sheet. Alcohol, 99% isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol is that very important. You need a good thermal paste. I use an Arctic MX4, MX5, or thermal grizzly, depending the clients that. They want also I use the Noctua, which are really good too. So depending on your preference, thermal paste for the opening tools, I'll be using a screwdriver. Uh, I fixed the screwdriver set. I recommend you guys grab the pro set. They're a little expensive, but they have all the stuff that you need. If not, grab the basic set. These are made out of S2 plus steel. We're gonna be using a Phillips number one. For the opening tool, I'll be using a guitar pick. Ametallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. A curved tweezers. A plastic rod spatula. And a used toothbrush or new toothbrush. With all this on hand, we're going to get it started. First thing first, we're going to flip it upside down. We're going to see a whole bunch of screws. There are two types of screws, short ones and long ones, but they're scattered all over the place. I'm going to go over how you... Uh, where they are. So the front end of the laptop, the front row, is are the short screws, so keep them in one pile. Also, if you guys like my content, if my contents are helping you guys out through your own service and repays, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. Once we remove the short screws in the front row, the second one, one row, I will call it, is the longest screw, so keep them in a different pile. Okay, the mid sides are the shorter screws. Even if yours is not, so it might be different. So just make sure you uh, orient them the way you take them. So this ladder was open before, so I'm just going with whatever I see. So long screws mid, short screws at the back corner on each side. and longer screws all the way back mid. Okay. Once you have all this removed, all we need to do is to grab the opening tool, put it in the front end of the laptop, between the palm rest and the cover, and just flick it, flip it, twist it, and you're gonna get the front bottom cover loose. Just grab it up, wiggle it around, and it will loose. You might wanna hear a few big click sounds, that's normal. All right, I see the battery is disconnected in here. You might want to disconnect yours. So just pull this trigger backward, put the spatula underneath and lift it up. Bring it like that. I can see this is a gaffer's tape. You can replace this one with a gaffer's tape, but actually it's really close to the heatsink. You don't need it. Remove this one on this side. Okay. And they supposedly did a maintenance servicing. We're gonna remove this cable that's for LCD. Just push it, slide it back towards the fan. And we'll put this one underneath. Now we're gonna remove, lift up the hinges. Remove the three screws on each hinge. Okay. 
Okay. After that, we're gonna lift up the hinges. Just grab the hinges from the corner. It's kind of tight. Try always in the corner here. Lift it up 90 degree. 90 degree that way. There's a screw missing for the fan right there. A screw missing for the fan right there. These two are not missing because these two go from the cover, but these two are missing. So let's go ahead and remove this side too. Oh, it is pretty dirty. Let's go remove this side, very dirty. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna remove the four screws for the CPU and four screws for the C GPU bracket right in here. There's a four of them and four of them right there. Go ahead and remove these four screws on each. Okay, now we can lift up the heat sink. If you have to remove the screws for the fans in here, and one screw right there for the fan, which is missing, and let's remove the screw right in here. For this one, they only left one. And you wanna lift it up, and you're gonna bring up the heat sink, and there we can see the whole, they have not even did a heat sink, and look at that. The CPU, only half of it is touching the heat sink right there. The other half is not. And the thermal paste is even right in here. It's, this cover has to be here. On top of this one, which was right over here, and prevented from GPU touching the here. And look at all this gunk in here. They never did that term cleaning in here. So we're gonna clean it up. And let's go ahead and remove the fan. If you remove the screws for the fan, there should be one in here. There's a missing screw right in here too. So remove all the screws and then gently pull back the fan cables from the connectors. Now we're gonna clean up the old thermal paste in here because I don't know what kind of thermal paste they have placed in here. So use an alcohol, clean it up. We are gonna clean up the heat sink side. This is not acceptable. That's what I'm saying. Like everybody should do their own repaste. It's better. And there should be a thermal pads in here. I see that there was some, but they removed it. They didn't put these are the power regulators. They need that to be cold. That's what they supposed to be in here, but they didn't put it. And that's a bad. So, and I'm guessing these thermal pads are the wrong size. We're gonna fix those. So I'm gonna take it outside with a toothbrush. We're gonna to clean up the fans and the heatsink. I'll be back. All right, now that I cleaned it up, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna present the, without thermal paste, I'm just gonna put this heatsink right on top. And I just wanna see the thermal pads in here. They have, the, the, the whole heatsink is kind of bended. They have bended the heat sink. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that the VRAMs, everything else is touching, which is not. Oh boy, they have really misaligned everything in here. So I need uh, 0.2 millimeters thermal pad, 0.5 millimeter thermal pads. So let's go ahead and fix this issue. For the VRAM, we're gonna keep it the way it is. 
Now, for this ones that we don't know the thermal party, you can use a thermal party. Thermal parties are really good to have in these situations. I'll leave you the link for the thermal parties in here. But before we do that, we're gonna put the fans back in. And I do not have the screws for these fans, but I'll work with whatever I have. So you grab the tweezers. You squeeze the fans in there. Make sure the cables are not pinched. Now, I only had one screw. These are M.2 screws, so you can get any M.2 screws to screw up these fans in here. I don't know why this fan is wobbling around. It has a plastic lifters, but I guess that's okay. So I'm gonna put one screw on this one here. And I don't have any M.2 screws right on hand. But nah, it's not gonna go anywhere anyway. So let's grab the thermal putty. And we're gonna grab it and place them right on the components that required. Okay, so there's one right there. I put the ones in here. And I'm gonna put a thermal party right on this power regulators right in here, which is this one right in here. I'll put a little bit over this one here. You can stack thermal party on the thermal pads, that's fine. That's absolutely fine, nothing's gonna happen. And there could be thermal pads right there. So let me see what else is missing. I am not missing any other. So this one's right in here, these power regulators, they do need to cool down, but I'm gonna put a thermal putty right on top. Power regulators, which they go right in here. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna use a good thermal paste. Uh, one line of thermal paste on the CPU die. And cross screw cross line and X on the GPU. Right there. I'll be using a Noctua, you can use a thermal grizzly. Once we have all this set ready to go, we're gonna bring it down and we're gonna put it straight right over the heat sink. Make sure the screw holes match. And you see how the thermal putty is pushing out through here? That's perfectly, that's what you want. That's what you wanna see. Okay. Now that we got this one ready, Right, the next step is to put the four screws on the CPU and four screws on the GPU. I always cross screw them. Go up. Cross screw them. Always. All right, once we have this one in here, I'll leave the link for gaffer's tape. You can put a gaffer's tape over this one, but you don't actually need it. It's fine, let the air go through and cool it down nicely. You get more exposed in here. So last thing is to go grab this cable, put it underneath. Make sure you put the fan screws if you have yours, one underneath right there, and then bring the hinges up and put the three screws on each hinge.
once you put the screws in there for this one you can actually put a gaffer's tape because i don't want this cable to get overheated put a gaffer's tape there and put the cable right over and slide down the connector right in there but this one is not for this side because i do need to i like it how it just goes in it so i finished my gap i'm gonna cut this corner a little bit all right so i'm gonna get this one it goes in here I'm gonna reopen this one and once I get my gaffers taped so I can tape it down with the gaffers. That's the correct proper way. But for now, I'm gonna leave it this one right here. Once we have this one in and set everything, we're gonna grab the power connector. We are gonna connect it, push it down on the motherboard, lock it down, and put the bottom cover right on top. And uh, this should cover this video and you just want to squeeze it down and put the rest of the screws Make sure the front end is facing you grab the screw the same orientation that you went short ones long ones short ones long short and long ones And I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out if you have any question or requests feel free to leave them in a video comment I'll try to answer them as soon as I can as always. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video